the title is basically leveraging data to hack the hackers which basically means uh, it's more of a of a defensive uh, side of security uh, so rather than going the traditional way of just monitoring systems and processes and and things in place with the help of uh, people and resources uh, we are going to use data to kind of uh, to kind of think like a criminal to catch the criminals uh, so a brief introduction of myself i'm sohail and uh, i'm at engineers and engineer at skill field and i have a cyber security research experience for over five plus years uh, so i have been doing a lot of bug bounty and stuff and uh, uh, it's it's so i i I have found bugs in, in some major social uh, in, in like major social platforms like, like Facebook and Instagram and those kind of stuff. And uh, speaking of my education, I have done my master of data science at Monash University. Uh, I have consulting experience with a lot of fortune 100 clients over the past three years. So I use my cyber security skills along with my data skills, which I have uh, got from my education to to uh different allies or to form defensive networks and solutions for major organizations uh, i usually am defensive during the day but offensive at night so that's a brief introduction of myself and so now i'm going to talk about the problem we solve let me just try hiding this uh so if you guys follow any kind of security news, you would know that data breaches have increased over the past uh, couple of years. Uh, as you know, in 2019, the, the annual uh, spending for data breach fines and data breach systems was some, something around $80 billion worldwide, and that has grown to about $130 billion by 2021. Uh, so data breach is a, is is a problem which a lot of companies are facing, but they they don't know the exact solution or the exact way to tackle it. Uh, companies are fed up by spending millions of dollars on defensive security. Uh, so th there are a lot of companies who come up with different security solutions and platforms, uh, and and these cost hundreds of thousands of dollars for just three or four analysts to use. So companies do spend a lot of money in buying this software, and then they again spend a lot of money in in hiring a lot of uh, operations analyst and this this the budget kind of explodes and uh and still they're getting free so so that is the problem uh, and also the the people on the floor the people working in the security operations uh so they are fed up by alerts popping every second so so the kind of uh so I, if if you guys don't know what's an alert and and stuff so we will get into this uh, but ideally the it, it, like say for example we walk into a bar and uh, there are people maybe dancing and people maybe singing and having a good time, but there are also security who kind of takes care of the place. So the security basically look for flags. They kind of look for flags like who, who's trying to do what. If maybe a person is trying to uh, do something and, and they feel flagged, they kind of investigate on it. Very similarly in the data, in the uh, cybersecurity and the data world, we do a very similar case where we basically look for flags. And once we, fla once we find a flag, we assign a person to it and then the person actually investigates into the flag and see if it's uh, a proper thing or not. Uh, and and if if you have one or two flags in in in, an, in maybe one hour, uh, an analyst can can sit and view it. But imagine you get maybe uh, ten thousand flags every second. Uh, the analyst cannot look into it. it. It's it's impossible to look into it. So analysts are basically fed up at uh, something of of at getting these kind of alerts. Uh, and so what? We as data engineers and cybersecurity experts do is we collect these machine logs, we enrich them with some metadata, and we store them in a good database or a good store, uh, something like Elasticsearch. Uh, and then we have cycles to kind of uh, push it to uh, from hot to warm to no, uh, maybe cold into S3 buckets and file systems and stuff. Uh, we use detection techniques, and these detection techniques could just be manual rules, uh, if else statements written. Uh, in some query language to kind of uh, find flags, or it could be even machine learning techniques to to find any anomalies or or maybe forecast uh, what's the usage of network and and maybe uh, see if if the network usage is kind of uh, persistent with the forecast. And there are a lot of machine learning techniques which we use to kind of uh, uh, detect these flags and and prevent any hacks which could happen. Uh, 
And then once the machine learning techniques are used, that's not the end. We, we again take the data and kind of uh, clean it and, and restructure it and store it. And this storage is done for future use so that the machine learning engineers and the data scientists can kind of take that data and they can uh, restructure or, or uh, maybe enhance their model over time. Uh, and, and that's it. So we have solved the problem. Uh, and thank you all for attending. Any questions? I'm just kidding. <laughs> so what's a detection? Uh, so a detection is the ability to find something fishy. Uh, so like I told, in, in a bar, if a security is basically looking at uh, things and he, he finds some, some kind of flag stuff, so, so that's something fishy. And similarly, we, we data people in the data world call it detection. Uh, so like I told, a detection could be manual rules or it could be state-of-the-art machine learning uh, algorithms uh, in place. Uh, so basically, log and machine data is something which a lot of big data professionals look up to. Uh, and, and basically, they take this data, they ingest it on a stream or on a batch uh, manner in a specific uh, place. Uh, they have they have uh, transformations and, and refining of the data, and then they pass it on to the machine learning uh, engineers who kind of put models to uh, this data to predict uh, some action or, or some parameter in place. Uh, so ideally, machine data looks very unstructured in, in a very unstructured text format. It looks something like this, and detecting something on machine data would, would look something like this. And this is not what, what you would want a security analyst to, to view. Uh, because security analysts are not are not data people; they are cyber security people. So they they if you if you just throw uh, data to them, they they really don't know what to do with it. You have to show you have to throw stuff to them which actually matters and which actually will help them to take a informed decision forward. Uh, so what happens post detection? So the thing is, the data teams basically work on detections, but these detections become alerts on the on the security aspects. And Maybe between the detection and the alert, you have software engineers who, who kind of work on making uh, proper UIs and proper uh, things in place, proper integrations in place, uh, so that the the data which we which we have, which looks something like this, is very well presented to a security analyst, which he can read in a very short amount of time, and with that information, he can take an informed decision on what to do next. Uh, so, security operations center. If some of you guys would be aware, some of you guys would not know. Uh, basically, it's 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 an office setup with a lot of people working and they work around the clock uh, and they have alerts coming to them every every uh, hour or so uh, and and these guys basically are are the front line of the cybersecurity world so they look at these alerts they kind of mitigate it they they have systems like a firewall systems defensive uh, networks in place to kind of uh, protect uh, the internet and the bad actors uh, and also in cybersecurity teams, in the last uh, couple of years, about seven to ten years, we have forensic teams which pop up. So these people are basically very highly experienced people in the security operations, and they do a lot of uh, defensive work. But their work is usually post breach. So if a company is breached, after that, uh, uh, maybe doing the forensics of who has breached it, what are, what is a, th a bad actor trying to do in the environment, and and these kind of information they kind of collate and. Uh, they they make it uh, safer because once a crime happens, it's it's not the end. Uh, the crime can reoccur. So basically, they, they they are the people who who stop it from reoccurrence or who kind of uh, uh, contain the attack and and uh, avoid explore, explosion of attacks. Uh, so end of the day, security operations center they have systems, but they there are physical people, there are human beings involved in in this uh, system, uh, and and there are a lot of them. Uh, and and as we know, humans. If you put a human being in a 24/7 environment, it's it's really tiring and it gets really. Uh, uh, basically, you 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 see a lot of stuff uh, going around, and that kind of uh, makes you a bit weaker and and you're prone to make errors because of the the tiredness and and, and fatigue. Uh, so differences in view. Uh, so like I told, uh, we we data people. So we are we are data engineers and machine learning engineers on. Uh, and we basically see a detection as something, some kind of flag which we detected by using data, and and we see it like this. But the thing is, in in the real world, if if you take the same model and if you go and put it into a security operations center production environment, the detections would be something like this. So our our model would be able to detect maybe three or four uh, anomalies in in the test data, but in the real world, there are attacks happening every second, 
and then if everything is is basically detected everything is pushed to the analyst this was what an analyst team uh, analyst sees and imagine a group of maybe five analysts in a shift uh, sitting and working on 80000 alerts which is it's 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 impossible so now just to give a benchmark uh, so cisco basically puts benchmarks in each countries and this was put around in australia in the year 2019 uh, so their, their benchmark uh, stated that 84% of uh, the organization in Australia, they, they did suffer a breach. And this is usually organizations who, who have a revenue of more than 15 million. And 84% of the organization in Australia have su suffered a breach and they have lost about a million dollars in fines and, and uh, other stuff. Uh, and 69% of the Australia, 69% uh, of uh, organization in Australia, usually the security operations center, they receive something about 100,000 uh, alerts every single day. There are not a lot of security operations centers in Australia compared to the United States and places like India and uh, other other places. But but then still we we have a lot of alerts coming in place, and there is also not a lot of uh, security engineers in Australia. It's it's really hard to uh, get really good security engineers. And this this is causing a, a real problem. Also, 75% of Australian organizations have have uh, have experienced an outage of five to 16 hours in this 2019 year, and uh, this is bad for business because it, it it avoids SLAs and and a minute lost on tech is a lot of money lost. Uh, also, Australian businesses are experiencing uh, a double uh, level of cybersecurity fatigue. So. What's a fatigue? Like I told, the analysts basically work for 24/7, and they have a lot of alerts being thrown to them. And if these, like, say for example, you have 100,000 alerts which is being uh, thrown to a, to a team of five or six people, it, it, it creates a lot of fatigue. So they have to keep manually looking at the alerts and and manually uh, segregating them, classifying them, trying to solve it, and and that creates a lot of fatigue. And uh, that has basically doubled over the years in 2019. And I'm sure from 2019 to 2021, it would have doubled again. So that is the rate at which uh, attacks are happening. Uh, so this is basically an image uh, which was created uh, by an analyst. Uh, and it states that you cannot get, uh, get alert fatigue if you never check your alerts. Uh, so this is actually not a good thing, but this is a funny practice in the cybersecurity world. If you actually join a security operations center, your team lead would actually uh, end up telling you that if, if there are certain parameters in this alert, then just close it, don't even look into it. And uh, this is not a good practice, but but then end of the day, we are all human beings and we don't have, uh, we, we can't read uh, 10,000 pages of, of uh, uh, description in, in just a minute or two. It, it takes time to do stuff. Uh, but when you have a small team and when you have to get the job done and when you, ha when you have to protect uh, the the net and the people and the data with limited resources you you have to do something and that's a bad practice but it's it is happening and uh, the thing is we are fatigued but adversaries are not so if you don't know adversaries are basically the opponents so uh, it, it, maybe a couple of years back cybersecurity was just about viruses malware and stuff but today it has it has grow, it has scaled to a very big level where we are not in uh, just we are not in just the cyber security and cyber defensive game, but we are in cyber war. So the adversaries are basically the opponents. This could be a nation state, a massively funded organization, or a or a very heavily funded group of people uh, who basically work on on uh, breaking stuff. And this breaking stuff is not not just for fun. They want to create impact. And th th this could be a, maybe a political impact, or this could be a business impact. And we might be fatigued. As, as working in organizations in, in an operation center, but the adversaries, the, the adversaries are, are never fatigued. So they, they always keep getting funding. They, they work 24 seven to uh, destroy stuff. And, and basically the destruction gets them money. So that's how it works. Uh, so now we are going to dive into how we could use open source uh, tools to solve this entire problem, which I described, which is the alert fatigue, uh, endless not able to focus on, on alerts and effectively resolve them. And also the the kind of uh, the breaches and and cyber attacks uh, get, like becoming bigger day by day, and on the whole picture, the cyber warfare level. So how how we could enter us, uh, how we could use open source to kind of build an entire solution to to kind of uh, fit in the cyber warfare uh, extent level. Uh, so we have a lot of tools on, uh, which have been open source, but one some of the tools which have gained a lot of traction in recent times is the Hive and Cortex. Oh, so open uh, this these basically was was created a couple of years back, 
and over the past five or six years this have this has gained a lot of traction and a couple of years back i think about three years back the hive came up with a version four uh, and and it was basically just they, they stepped up they stepped up the game to another level uh, which you you guys will be seeing so just to give a background about what these tools are so the hive is basically an open source software which is a case management platform so it, it's it's a very simple system it's it's a ticketing system designed specifically for security operations so we have a lot of ticketing system like request tracker maybe some of you guys would be working on jira uh, and so on but those ticketing systems could be kind of they are they, they come up with a generic solution which can be deployed in a call center tech support even a software uh, engineering firm where you kind of have tickets to uh, change code and stuff like that but the hive came up with a with a ticketing a system not for a generic use case they came up specifically designed for security operations uh, and then we have cortex so cortex is another software which basically just sits on the back of the hive so as the image goes it's basically the brain of the hive and this helps in uh, creating automation use cases for us uh, so so once we get the tickets we kind of have have some programs and python codes and, and stuff like that running in the background which can help in automation which can which can basically it's, it's components of the engine which can help the analyst uh, to do a better job so just to give a background about what happens in a security operations center. Uh, so we have something called security and incidents response lifecycle, which any security analyst would be uh, introduced to once he joined any operation center. Uh, so the, the base, the fundamental or the foundation of a security operation center usually is based on three steps, which is detection, analysis and response. Detection, like I said, we have data teams which help in detection using machine learning. There are manual rules written, and then there are a lot of systems in place that you can you can basically buy detection uh, agents from vendors from major security vendors like Kaspersky or Avast and stuff like that. Uh, so basically, these these are basically systems or, or things in place in 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 specific infrastructure of an organization which kind of detects any any kind of malicious behavior or detects any kind of off track behavior which is happening uh, in the system or in the network or, or any anything of that sort. Uh, so they, they are basically used for monitoring and once you get a detection, we basically give it as an alert to the security operation. So so the security operations gets us, gets us as an alert and then once he gets it as an alert, uh, he basically the, the analyst basically they view the alert, they read into it, they, they, they kind of uh, they understand what the alert is. And once if they feel they have to spend time and resource on the alert, they then they then create a ticket or basically we call it a case. And once a case is created, then maybe you have a couple of guys working on the case to kind of uh, maybe maybe fight the alert. So, so it could be maybe uh, uh, finding more information about. So let's consider, for example, we have an hacker in an infrastructure and we we created we got an alert. So I say I am the team lead of a security operations. I got an alert. I basically read through it. And then I, I pass on that alert to uh, maybe three three of my guys, and I tell them that uh, you know there's a guy in our in in our systems and he's kind of uh, looting around and maybe look into it. So one of the guys maybe uh, looks at which IP address that guy is, where he is from, and stuff like that. And maybe another guy would try to update his firewall rules and or maybe take him to uh, a system to kind of analyze his behavior on what he's trying to do and stuff like that. And then we have containment and eradication and discovery. So this is usually done uh, in uh, managed security as a service or uh, MSSP providers usually do this. Uh, so what happens is uh, the security operations center not only protect their systems, they also protect the uh, systems on the internet and, and the systems of their customers. So once they find any threat actor in looting inside their network or looting inside a customer's network or a customer's device, they basically try to contain and eradicate it, or they try, basically try to destroy it without causing any harm to uh, the customer's data. They, they maximize, uh, they, they, they try to the maximum extent to, to not come, uh, cause any harm to the customer's data. Uh, so this is the containment and eradication step, which is the final step of a security operations center. Uh, so the detection and the alert is we have, it's in the detection phase. Uh, creating a case and having people working on it or having playbooks uh, work on it, which, which I'll be showing in a second, is basically the analysis stage. And the response stage is basically containment and, and removing it from uh, a system or an infrastructure. So just another dive in. So the Hive is a scalable open source and free security incident and response platform. This is the exact definition as, as uh, provided by the vendor. Uh, so it's, it's open source because uh, 
it's 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 open for anyone to use it's free anyone can use it for free there's there's no charge even if you're a commercial organization and it's scalable so if you have one endless today and if you have a thousand endless next year we can scale it with these it's 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 not like you have to migrate hundreds of stuff and you have to have a uh, maybe 300 people working on how, how to figure figure out like figure out the stuff it's it's not like that it's very easy to scale so what's cortex cortex is again a scalable open source and free uh, uh, analysis and response engine uh, so cortex like i told is basically a component in the automation uh, level uh, so it basically helps uh, in the automation it's basically drives the engine and it's scalable open source and free similar to the hive and how the hive and cortex is is kind of fit into a security operations uh, level is something like this so we have the detections and we have the alerts generated the alerts usually come on the hive and once the alerts come on the hive we can basically view the alert read what 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 the alert has and stuff like that and and if we feel it's valid and we need a couple of guys to work on it we can uh, promote that alert, alert to a case which which is usually triaging it's very similar to how we triage a ticket in jira and stuff so basically we promote the alert to a case and then we have security uh, playbooks are, are basically like it automation scripts running on the background uh, to help in to help in some of the tasks which the uh, security analyst do does and using all this information we can uh, later work on containment and eradication uh, so this is this usually is done using sandbox environments or, or this could be done using python scripts which could be deployed on cortex uh, so ideally the hive and cortex usually work in the analysis and response cycle and uh, detection we have, we have devices working which basically detect something flags it and sends it as an alert to the hive and the hive and cortex takes care of it uh, till the uh, closure of the case so just a dive into the hive uh, so like i said the, the just the the terminologies are different but it's very similar to a ticketing system uh, so we have components of the hive ui which is basically alerts so we have detection which comes as alerts onto the hive uh, and we have cases so cases are basically tickets on the hive it, it just contains information about a lot of stuff like uh, like the threat actor maybe it could contain information about an ip address it could contain reports from uh, third party vendors and stuff like that we have case details which is information on the threat and threat actor we have tasks so tasks are basically a set of actions which are uh, which are kind of uh, portrayed in a case or which is shown to the analyst in a case which has to be followed to kind of close the case so this task is usually created by people with a lot of experience in security operations and then we have we have observables so observables are basically indication of compromise or indicators of compromise and they are basically values on which we could perform any action uh, to kind of get more information about the threat or the threat actor or the hacker and then we have the dashboard as usual for for the management users so this kind of uh, gives an idea of how the team is doing how how uh, the uh, how how people are working and if there are any any things which uh, the management managers or the team leaders should kind of work on to to get a be better performance uh, in uh, in in their business uh, so the hive uh, live ui feed looks something like this it's it's so this is basically uh, the cases page like i told we have the alerts where all the alerts come in once an alert is reported to a case it comes and falls over here so we can just click on this to get all the cases which which looks basically like this and then we have tasks and waiting tasks so this are basically the set of steps which has to be done in closure of cases uh, so i can just go take a waiting task and start working on it and then we have a live ui feed which basically is like a twitter feed which just keeps telling on what's happening on the in the security operations so say for example there's a guy there's a colleague maybe sitting uh three three desks away and he kind of blocks an ip address from firewall and he kind of writes the description on the hive so i get to know that okay this ip address is already added to the firewall and i don't have to repeat the task so it, it helps in uh in in better performance as uh, a better teamwork in the operations so what's MISP? So MISP is an open source and it's a free threat intel platform. Uh, so threat intel is basically information or intel information or confidential intel information, which is kind of uh, being shared around in, in the technology world. Uh, so using this information, we can basically stay ahead of the hackers. And these information basically, so say for example, I am working in an organization, uh, and maybe there's another guy who's working in another organization and we both are working in the security operation center. So MISP is kind of a place where it's, it's kind of a database where if I find an IP address, which is kind of, maybe he compromised the box and he's trying to do something. So I can basically eradicate that person, but I can also update that IP address in, in maybe this database, which basically other, uh, other company people or other 
defensive uh, organizations can kind of use that data to get protected or protect their own customers. So basically these three components uh, are open source tools which kind of work hand in hand and how they work is basically MISP uh, throws threat intel information as, as alerts to the hive. Uh, the, these alerts, so these alerts also come from detection systems, but they're also threat intel information. So once they pop up, the analyst basically looks into the threat intel information and, and accordingly acts, uh, like he acts according to it too. To mitigate it and and stay high. and but then we have Coltix, which is the engine, which which basically helps in automation, and uh, it it makes life easier for the analyst. So now we have we have created a solution, but ideally we have just taken uh, alerts from one UI to another UI. So say for example, if a security operations is already using something like CrowdStrike or Azure Sentinel, they have alerts and stuff popping uh, uh, popping in front of them, uh, but just putting this solution is not the complete solution because we have just taken the alerts from that section to, to this section. So next I'll be introducing a very simple uh, tool to use. So this is also open source and free and it's a workflow automation tool. So what this is is basically you have something called nodes uh, and basically it's it's a drag and drop for programmers. Uh, so you don't have to basically code each and everything. Uh, if say you're working in a security operations center, you, 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 it's not a good practice to kind of write Python scripts every uh, 10 or 15 minutes because they already have a lot of tasks uh, on their on their plate and, and coding kind of makes it, it, it basically wastes their time and it's not effective use of the time. So rather what, what happens is if you deploy this kind of a solution in front of them, they can drag and drop according to their use cases and they can use it for uh, uh, their daily task as per their uh, convenience. Uh, so the Hive basically has a webhook and this has come in the recent versions. So it, it has a webhook. So webhook is basically an external call on, on some kind of a change. Uh, so say, for example, there's an alert which comes onto the Hive or there's a case which uh, comes onto the Hive. Uh, so once it comes onto the Hive, the Hive kind of calls another system, whatever is specified uh, on the configurations, uh, say, stating that there is some kind of change which has happened. And those change, uh, those kind of uh, uh, changes which happens on the Hive, uh, the information out of that can be taken and that can be used for uh, further automation, which I'll be showing in some time. Uh, so now let's take a look at a sort. So like I told about how we kind of uh, automate stuff. Uh, so SOAR is basically security orchestration, automation and response. Uh, so ideally the, the fundamental of SOAR is basically two things. Uh, which is effectively use case management uh, to get all the detection in one place, uh, which is basically have a single source uh, of UI for the security analyst, not have uh, 15 UIs, which he, he has to kind of keep moving around to, to figure out stuff. So it, he has to just, uh, so, so say for example, today we are searching, the, the main reason why we search has become so efficient is because we go to Google, which is a single UI. So similarly, a security should have one UI, and that should be the source where he goes to to kind of investigate to kind of remediate or, or do whatever he has to do. Uh, and also another main important uh, imp importance of SOAR is basically uh, automation and response of the detection or alerts. Uh, so it, it basically you, you have detection, which is kind of uh, automated. You have machine learning jobs and rules which which are taking place uh, place. You have uh, uh, the the kind of uh, analysis stage, which which is up to a, a level automated because you have third party vendors who kind of uh, have database and they store it, they, they fund it and they keep it. They keep really good information. So all you have to do is you have to just ask, you, you just make a call to uh, their systems and their systems uh, gives us the, the really good data which we can uh, take action on. Uh, now, SOAR is a technology which, which not only helps in these two steps, it kind of maps these two steps, makes a chain and kind of automates it for the security analyst. And, and the chain is not just the first step or the second step, it's from end to end. It's from detection till response. The full thing should be automated if, if there's mundane things happening. Uh, so there are a couple of components of source. So one of them is the case management tool or a ticketing system. And we have the Hive, which is not a ticketing system, it's a case management tool specifically designed for the security operations. We have customization and flexibility, which is the Hive, we have, it's open source, it's scalable. You can you can do anything on it. You can basically code anything on it. If you have a couple of guys and if you have experts in, in specific domains, they can come and work on the Hive and deploy it in a specific manner according to the organization's needs. Uh, 
you have threat intel and response strategy which is cortex which is the background of the hive which helps in uh, enrichment of data using uh, metadata and and then it helps in kind of response uh, or performing some certain actions to kind of close a ticket or a case and then we have process workflows which we have tools like n8 and, and there are a lot of open source tools but one of the best is n8 and and it's kind of gaining traction in current days uh, you have collaboration and information sharing which is the hive so the hive is not only a, a very simple case management tool i can kind of share it to my analysts i can share it to another uh, organization there's multi-tenancy involved and uh, there's, there's a lot of stuff involved which can basically help uh, really big organizations uh, to kind of use that uh, tool up to the full extent. So in this entire process where we have detection using machine learning, using artificial intelligence, using manual rules uh, to maybe analysis uh, using uh, the hive. So basically the, the UI, which is the hive, and then we have analysis using Cortex, and then we have response using Cortex. And then we have automation using a drag and drop feature, uh, a playbook kind of feature, which, which just makes a drag and drop. Uh, we have helped not, uh, we have not only helped the security operations just view that detection, we have, we have also helped them respond to it. So now how this helps is imagine there are a group of 10 people and there are maybe 80,000 alerts which are thrown to them. They don't have to manually sit and read every alert based on certain rules or based on certain actions and based on certain steps. The, it's, there is automatic closes of alerts which they don't have to investigate on. So now out of 80,000 alerts, maybe 50 or 60,000 alerts are, are kind of, uh, it's of no use. So that basically gets discarded. Uh, and then you may maybe have another 25,000 alerts, which uh, kind of, it's basically very simple to close it. It's, it's mundane steps in world. So that can be automated using our solution. And then you maybe have a couple of thousand alerts, which basically the analyst can, uh, can actually view, can actually read, can actually spend the time on and investigate and close it. So this kind of helps us to stay ahead of, uh, uh, the adversaries. Uh, so a demo is better rather than me talking for another 20, 30 minutes. So this is what the Hive UI would look like. This is the go-to UI for uh, all the analysts in the security operations center. Uh, all the detections come in as alerts, as we have discussed. We could preview the alert and we could see all the details, the observers, the similar cases, and some other basic details. And upon seeing this, we can either merge it into an existing case or we can create a new case out of the alert. Uh, so once we create a new case, we are taken to the case where we have certain details of the case along with the related cases. We can close the case, flag the case, or uh, share the case with uh, other employees in the security operations or the other teams in the security operations. We can also see the observables and we, as uh, we have discussed in uh, the webinar. Uh, we can run analyzers on the observables. So analyzers basically are uh, Python codes, which basically uh, query information from, from third party services uh, and enrich it uh, with some kind of metadata, which would help uh, us in making informed decisions. We also have the Cortex UI. Uh, so the Cortex UI basically has the jobs history. Uh, and this is basically, it, it, it basically gives us an information about the jobs which are run on the Hive, uh, the analyzers and responders which are run on the Hive. And this is not something which uh, the security analysts in the SOC would be viewing, uh, but this is more, of, more or less used in debugging and uh, designing the solution assay. We then have the main part of the stack, which is the N810 workflow automation. Uh, so on, on this uh, tool, it's it's basically just a drag and drop. We can create something called nodes, and each node can have a specific functionality. So to create a node, we can just go over here, uh, type in the hive. We can give in cert certain details, connect it to uh, the specific instance of the hive which we have, and we are good to go. Uh, on creating a certain workflow, we can execute it to test it, uh, or other than that, we can even activate it. Uh, so once we activate it, it, it basically, it stays active on the background and it, it could also listen to webhook connections uh, and it could execute the workflow. Uh, so this is the place where all the automation happens. Uh, we have the Hive, which is the case management tool. 
and we have Cortex, which, which basically powers the engine for automation. Uh, yep. So moving on, I would just present a small slide. Uh, so this is a very simple solution, which is done by Palo Alto Networks, which is one of the biggest vendors uh, in, in the uh, detection and response space. Uh, now comparing an open source and free solution to something, uh, some, some solutions made by the big vendors, uh, it's not a fair comparison, uh, but still we can kind of weigh the pros and cons. So, so the thing is the big vendors have really good solutions in place and they have uh, stuff in place which could, which could help uh, major organization and uh, defense organizations to kind of uh, work around in the cyber warfare space, uh, but they do cost a lot of money. So, so uh, something like two or three analysts would cost something like hundred thousand plus dollars, and and that uh, is a big con. Uh, and also the the con is uh, one of the major con is there is no solution in the place which has the alerts UI. Uh, so they do have one UI which kind of uh, Kind of segregates it into two different sections, but we they don't have two separate uh, sec sectors as whole. Uh, but the Hive has kind of come up with a solution where they have the alert separate and detection separate. Uh, so that way, maybe developing over it, it makes it a lot easier. Querying, searching over data, makes it a, a lot easier. Also, the paid solutions they they require a lot. Uh, uh, they're they're really very heavy to run, and they require a lot of uh, system and resources uh, to kind of run. Uh, they cannot be customized in any fashion, so they are just sold by the vendor and it's as is aware as we have to buy it and use it in our organization. Uh, but there are a couple of pros. So the pros is basically they have a lot of playbooks already built, pre-built, uh, and they have basically had a security analyst uh, who kind of have years in experience who kind of build playbooks and uh, they, they, they make it under uh, an IP and sell it with their solution. Uh, so, so that way the end is basically don't only get the solution. They, they do get maybe hundreds of playbooks uh, along with that. Uh, also, the consider the, there's a, a complete incident and response uh, cycle automation uh, documentation, which is given by them, uh, which usually open source tools. You, you have a lot of tools moving around. So there's, there's no fixed documentation or fixed solution, uh, which can uh, be built. Um, so how we as Secure Field uh, can help in this space? Uh, so basically, we are a team of uh, developers, data engineers, analysts, uh, and people working in the ML and AI space. Uh, so we are a company which was established in the year 2016. It's completely Australian and owned by uh, an Australian and run by Australians. Uh, so we are a fast growing team and we have a multi-million dollar revenue kind of uh, work on building these kind of solutions. Uh, and basically, we we have uh, people who can use open source technology and make it really simple to deploy to our customers. So this is how we kind of uh, work around it. So any questions in the end? Like anybody, any questions? Please. <laughs>